Hey everybody, it's um it's a bonus video for you uh, today because uh, we've got some uh, uh, great videos dropping next week with uh, Dan Ewing uh, for our occupation week and uh, we thought that we would do one of our regular reaction videos ahead of time and uh, we're still in, um, well, we've come out of lockdown but there's still restrictions which prevent us from doing this in person. How are you anyway, Ben? I'm good. I'm good. Apologies for looking away. There's an eBay auction that's just about to, and I keep getting buzzed on my phone. And it's not even for the for the for the auction. It's the auction that I got outbid on an hour ago. They keep sending me messages going, "Well, there's only got two minutes left." I don't care. <laughs> I don't. This is the Stop perfect me. opportunity for the uh, Jeopardy music to come back into play. <laughs> Whilst we wait with anticipation. I'm going to throw my phone across the room and well that's all right so you know you just uh do your thing and i'll do mine but uh <laughs> we thought we would react we thought we would react go ahead i was gonna say my 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 emotional relationship with my phone at the moment is very very in line with what we're about to talk about okay excellent <laughs> uh we should let Newcomers know if you've stumbled across this video as the first thing you've seen us do. This is just an unscripted, unformatted um, chat that we, we kind of do. We have a podcast called Good Movie Monday, which you can go and listen to. It's much better. <laughs> um, but uh, no, we thought this week we would react to um, George Romero's long lost film, The Amusement Park, which has recently landed on Shudder and everybody's talking about it. And um, Ben, I, we, we told each other to refrain from reacting to each other, so we don't know how each other felt about the film. Um, would you like me to go first, just with a basic reaction? Yeah, sure, you go first. Oh, Ash, shit. very dangerous. You go first. Yeah, that was shit. It's, it's, the best, it's the best seller I can do. No, 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 the movie was shit. Oh, the movie was shit. Oh, right. I thought you were commenting <laughs> on my breath. <laughs> no. Amusement park. Very boring. You go first. <laughs> you know, a, a few weeks ago, um, I, w I saw people online really selling it, like talking it up. This is going to be the best thing we've ever seen. Like it's going to be George Romero's lost masterpiece, all this kind of stuff. And I said, look, you, you might want to temper your expectations here. Like, I don't think it's going to be that great, just to be honest with you. And um, boy, did I get savaged. Like, boy, they went out after me, man. But I'm right. It was pretty shit i mean look admit it like admittedly this movie was hidden because the lutheran church who paid for it saw it and uh shut it down but if it was in, in any way any good it would have come out before now. like i mean i know they assumed it was lost and stuff but i don't think it would have been able to remain hidden at the time well look i can i can feel people fuming right now and like seething at my reaction but let me contextualize a little bit and and sort of preface by saying I respect the film. Like, I'm glad it's out there. I'm also glad it landed on Shudder, so we get to watch it without having to pay any extra money for it. I'm not any of those things except for glad it's on Shudder. I don't okay. respect the film. I don't... Well... It, look, I, 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 look, I respect that he was, uh, what he did, like when they asked him to produce uh, an educational video about elder abuse. Um, I respect that he fucked with them. And, and made it the way that he did. I was gonna, you know what? You know what the biggest flaw of the film was, if that was his aim, it's that he made the old people so repulsive yeah. that you wanted people to fuck with them. <laughs> I know. You wanted them to be abused. Like Jesus, so, like, is that that woman calling out for a quarter? <laughs> fuck you. So I'm going to, look, let's tell people th this is full of spoilers because if you haven't seen it, I'm, I am going to ruin it for you. Um, so stop now and go watch it, then come back. Uh, it's essentially, it's a bit like a Twilight Zone episode, isn't it? Because it just loops on itself and that's, you know, fairly uninspiring as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's but, basically, because um, I did, the, the thing I did like, I like the setup. I like yeah. the the who's I don't know his name, but the old guy talking to camera at the start, talking setting up the premise of it, and then he goes and what he into basically talks to himself, a future version of himself, and asks him if he wants to. And then what would have happened had the guy said yes? But he asks the future version of himself if he wants to go outside and go for a walk with him. Yeah, and he's like the future version of himself is is almost in a padded room. And he's all disheveled and bruised and battered and says, no, 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 there are people out there. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. go. 
which is nothing for me. There's nothing for me out there. He said, there's nothing for me out there. And you know, in in a time of lockdown, (laughs) (laughs) the coronavirus, everyone has come to the realization, like everyone over the age of 30 has come to the realization that there is nothing out there for anyone (laughs) and just stay inside. It's much better. (laughs) So, So, so the, 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 the original here or the, the, the clean version of himself does venture into the park and, and ends up being yeah, that's right. he stumbles into an amusement park full of yeah. full of young and yeah well, well it's actually full of old people it's full of old people though it's full of old whiny old people who are just as uncaring to each other as the uh, as the the young people are yeah and the younger and the, people <laughs> i want to i want to show you something um i saw this on instagram where uh, i think shutter put out one of those tiles where they got reviews and stuff on it um, let me bring it up. So some reviews have come in. Stunning, psychedelic, thought-provoking stuff. That's from NME. Then you've got Memorable and Haunting by Nerdist. This is my favorite. Consequence, I guess that's a magazine or an online website, said the scariest film Romero ever made. <laughs> and then the final one is damn well worth a watch, and that's decided. Yeah, I mean, if you want to get your name on a quote, then I'm sure you can say, say whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, the movie itself, like it's not even a movie. The um, the the educational, or what 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 would you call it? It's a freaking um, public service announcement. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to jump on the Good Movie Monday uh, Instagram and post a, a review tile saying the greatest geriatric horror film of all time, and just see what happens. <laughs> I don't mean it. I publicly stated right here that it's complete horseshit. Yeah, but uh, let's see if they pull that quote. <laughs> but uh, like when was this made this was made after he had done night of the living dead but before he had made anything else notable i think he did one or two films after after night of the living dead that weren't horror and didn't really do much and so this was right before the crazies i think so right he's still a young he's still a young and um i don't know like i mean i i do i did kind of appreciate the tone of it but um it, it just felt so fucking yeah. pointless I just think it was, you know, fun. It is funny that it's Romero. I thought it was, it was just way too obvious. Like that's the problem. There is absolutely zero subtext in this film. It is the text. Well, and it's all metaphorical, isn't it? And well, it's not even that much of a metaphor. Like it's not a metaphor because it is, it is the thing. It's like happening. If it was, yeah. Yeah. If it was a metaphor, that would be. I mean, that's kind of that has been a bit of my kind of bugbear about. A lot of the praise leapt on George Romero. Yeah. In that, you know, like Dawn of the Dead is this kind of metaphor for consumerism and stuff. And you're like, I can I can almost guarantee that that had nothing to he had nothing to do with it. Like he wrote the movie and it turned out that way. And he's like happy to take credit for it because none of his other films have really have got any kind of depth like that. Well, I mean, Night of the Living Dead arguably does because it has those, you know, those freeze frames at the end that kind of suggest that he was having sort of a, a commentary on Black America and all that kind of stuff and segregation and all that. Um, so I get, I think he. Seconds of it. Well, no, but I, I kind of think he kind of did have sort of that level of of um, context in Night of the Living Dead, but then I think everyone else piled that on. Dawn of the Dead, like like he did it with Night of the Living Dead, so he must have done it with Dawn of the Dead, and they've read into it and made it more than yeah. what it is. I mean, I get, I get, I get what you know what people are saying about Night of the Living Dead, but and yeah, you know, and he's not the sole author of that film. Let's not forget yeah. that either. Yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, it's pretty like in Dawn of the in in Night of the Living Dead, it is. It's really like a, a something that happens in the last. It's, it's not a thread that runs through the whole film where this guy is treated like if no, I I, I, I don't want to. We're going to piss people off. Far in my. We're going to piss people uh, off because I yeah, I agree. But, I I, th- I think he's an overrated. Uh, he was an overrated director. I loved I loved a lot of his stuff. I, don't get me wrong. I I do think he made great films, but I think he also made very average ones and a few terrible ones. Yeah, look, and and like I think it's it's like every director. I think usually they have about five films in them before they start they they turn to shit <laughs> they all, all repeat themselves and they lose whatever whatever jizz they had in them that made them good in the first place. Like they say, they've said everything they had to say. 
<laughs> and like I mean, look, I, I think Monkey Shines is great. I think Dawn of the Dead is great. I think Return of the Living Dead, uh, Another Living Dead is great. I think Day of the Dead is great. I like Crazies. I like Martin. Mm-hmm. I like a lot of his films, but they're not exactly uh, a roadmap to cure all of, all of society's ills. You know, like they just <laughs> they just are what they are. And yeah. you know, this movie kind of, to me, is like proof that he is way too obvious for a lot of the credit that he's been getting over the years. And it's why the last, like Survival of the Dead and Diary of the Dead, and all those last ones that he had anything to do with have been a bit ordinary. Yeah. How's, um, uh, how's that auction going? I just won it. That was <laughs> the little beep. I don't know the beep. Yeah, I, so. I, just, I just won it. Well, uh, don't you know, contain your excitement there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, revenge, a movie with uh, Jackie Collins. No, not Jackie Collins. Um, no, it is Jackie Collins. No, what's her name? The Collins, Collins. The one who's in all of the Joan Collins. Yeah, Joan Collins. It's called Revenge. I'm excellent. Looking forward to seeing it. Fantastic. Anyway, <laughs> well, I mean, what, yeah, what, like, what, I just you know, what more is there to say? I mean. I mean, look, I, get, I mean, I get what people like say, like it is like a, it is pretty psychedelic and all that sort of stuff, but it is very much a, like a, almost a PSA. If, if it hadn't thing. been Romero that directed this, we wouldn't give a shit. No, it would be an interesting PSA that someone like, you know, Kayla Janice would show at a, um, at, you know, at some kind of a festival or an event screening kind of thing. Mm. that you'd go oh that's pretty interesting and if like and maybe this was maybe this the lutheran church had meant this for kids you know to you know um, respect your elders and all that kind of stuff respect your elders and it is definitely a product of the 70s like it's yeah yeah. the whole thing is is very very like almost handicapped by its 70s-ness well serves themselves right for not being there to see what he was doing yeah like, you know, if you want a product, be there to make sure the product's delivered. I personally have made that mistake on numerous occasions. <laughs> uh, but I mean, like, I guess that, you know, why are you hiring? Yeah. Why are you hiring George Romero? You, you kind of want him to do his thing. Like that's, it's always a tough thing, especially when it's something like that, where you're like, you're caught between, I want to let the artist do what I paid the artist to do. Why? On the other hand, if you're the Lutheran Lutheran Society, why would you hire the guy that made Night of the Living Dead? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Maybe they didn't know. Maybe he'd done like a whole bunch of other shorts and uh, you know PSAs and things that, and that's what they you know sold him on. And he was just looking for a quick job to yes. tide him over in between, <laughs> you know, making All right. speeches. I don't know. Well- there we are. We have uh, we have we have seen and we have reacted, and it's on Shutter, so you know it's it's easily accessible for anyone that wants to catch it themselves. And it's only fifty minutes long, so it's you know it's not that arduous. That's pretty. <laughs> but, but... Within within the first ten minutes, within the first ten minutes, I wanted to go out on a on an old person clubbing spree. <laughs> Yeah, I much preferred that sketch that the DGen did back in the day when they all phoned into the ABC. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, all right, dude, yeah. that was a bit of a bonus video. Thanks for um, thanks for being here, and congratulations on the auction. <laughs> no worries, I'm very happy. Young lovers, you want your fortune told. We want to see what our life is going to be like. What part of life? When we get old. Are you sure? Yeah. You must see it all to the end. Sir, there's nothing outside. I'm going outside anyway. There's there's nothing outside. Nothing. One of these times, the door will open in your life. And you will step into the amusement park. Oh, no, it's fun. You like it. You really like it. Full of hope, anticipation for the future, and curiosity for what you will find there.
man in the amusement park is a mirror image of yourself, separated only by the passage of time. Why are you punishing me like this? For heaven's sake! Hello? There's nothing, nothing out, out there. I'll see for myself. Bye. I'll see you in the park someday. Mate, that was great. I'm glad you hated it. I look, I, mean, I read some of the reviews, and you're like, this is obvious for people who don't have the intelligence to get subtext, <laughs> who like everything yeah. spelled out for them. Who you're like to like, be beaten over the head with it? Like, I mean, that all that stuff with the fucking money bags guy the rich guy at the restaurant and you're like, Oh, how belabored is this? And the <laughs> scene at the, like, I mean, admittedly it was the funniest part, but the scene at the <laughs> bumper cars where they have the accident <laughs> oh, no. and the cops, the cops reaction, like, well, I didn't see it. So I just have to take, uh, so I'm just going to write down what, what I see and what you've told me, but Oh, you don't, you it says here on your license that you need glasses. And you're like, I mean, that is, that's all fair enough. But if it, the movie had been, just been that, down what that about the little girl with the chicken. The little girl with the chicken. Little girl. <laughs> and what what the hell? What happens at the end when he's reading the book to the little girl and her mother's packing up? And then she so creepy. She just wants to leave. And as she's leaving, he's like, <laughs> like, like, like he's upset because he she wouldn't let him finish the story. Yeah, exactly. He just like, fucking interrupted. Yeah, like they want to go home, asshole. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Like for fuck's sake, and that and you got a free piece of fucking chicken, man. Yeah, and that woman with the quarter. Like, I need to make a phone call. Won't somebody help? Like, like it's no one else's responsibility to give you fucking fifteen cents, twenty five cents to make a phone call. Like, fuck, go home, <laughs> go home, and use the phone there. You fucking. <laughs> fucking... <laughs> like it's just unbelievable. Like the the fucking. <laughs> entitlement, the entitlement that these old people fe felt because they're old and slow they just made me f like watching it made me furious <laughs> like I mean I, right. like, I get that it's supposed to be a metaphor for fucking old people in society in general but there's a fucking reason why young people are, are fucking roll their eyes when they have to deal with old people because fucking hell and, and you've got you've got there's literally you've got two choices when dealing with them it's either condescension or eye rolling <laughs> because what else is left rest everything else is just painful well apparently beating you can beat them yeah <laughs> i just i just like to wash them in kerosene <laughs> That kills you can go to bed or I will make you go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But I like to you make them... me for a glass of shut the hell up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and arts and crafts. <laughs> Today's arts and crafts has been extended by four hours. <laughs> See the What's film? That? that was a remake. Happy Gilmore was a remake. Yeah. <laughs> That's where he got it from. They showed it to hit to Adam Sandler in school in high school. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh shit, man. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna truck on. All right. Awesome. That was good. Catch you tomorrow. I see you tomorrow.